what I'm about to say is going to sound shocking and it may make you want to ridicule me. But I'm starting to get cold. <laughs> you know, it is wintertime here in San Diego, and even though it is San Diego, um, it does actually get a little chilly from time to time. Ridicule me if you must, but it does get chilly. Well, I'm just going to have a little toast here this morning for breakfast because, in all honesty, I'm lazy and I don't feel like cooking anything. So, a little toast and butter and... Oh, maybe an apple, too, would go good. When you're lazy and you don't want to cook anything, but you still need to eat some breakfast, this is what I do. But as you can see, I'm never too lazy to make coffee in the morning. Hmm. And today's coffee is especially good for some reason. So chili is a relative term, I realize, and as I've been getting older, I seem to not be able to handle either temperature extremes very well, and I will do anything to try to be comfortable. Uh, so now that it's getting a little bit chillier, and you know, by chilly, it's, it's not bad yet. Uh, we've gotten down into the mid-40s here at night, and I'm good when I'm in the van. I can stay warm, especially because I've got a big down duvet. Um, but I haven't really wanted to break out my winter clothes yet. I'm still wearing my kind of summer pants. I have switched to warmer socks here recently just because my feet were kind of constantly cold. But at night or if I'm up early in the morning, which is not usually a thing that happens, but, but especially when I'm out at night walking around and especially when I'm at the ocean where it's a little bit more damp, the air is a little bit more damp, uh, the cold has been affecting me. The, the chilly weather has been affecting me. I know it's not cold, um, but uh, I, <laughs> like, like I said, I haven't wanted to crack out the winter weather uh, clothes yet, but I have been layering up. I've got a couple of these Patagonia sweaters. This one is nice just because it's, it's soft. Uh, I was really disappointed with this one because it's starting to pill, I think is that the term? and not looking really good. Uh, the, one of the zippers is actually busted and it catches on everything. I need to, maybe today I need to uh, do something with that. I think I can just cut cut this and, and sand it down. So not real happy with the quality of this. I didn't pay full price for it, but I did pay a lot for it. It looks like it's a lot older than it than it is, but other than the way it looks, it's very, very comfortable. If it's um, rainy or windy, I will either switch to this Patagonia uh, kind of puffer style jacket. And this one's held up much better. Uh, I have really no quality issues with this one at all. Um, I'm not a big fan of this slick fabric, so I, I prefer to wear the other one. Um, but if it's windy, if it's rainy, uh, this one is great. And when you combine these two, it basically turns them into a winter coat. It's not terribly comfortable to combine these two. They're both kind of a slim cut, and so you don't have a whole lot of room to move around in them. And so I've been a little irritated with them on the cold nightly walks. Uh, but because I've been wanting to stay warm, I've just been layering them up. Do what you got to do, right, to stay warm and comfortable. So my little uh, setup there with the two sweaters is working out pretty pretty good. Uh, I can vary them and um, you know switch them out and pretty much be able to handle San Diego type winter weather just fine. But of course I don't want to stay around San Diego all winter. So with that in mind, I'm thinking I would like to have a little better warm weather clothes on hand. Um, I don't have, I don't have any real, uh, winter gear that has a hood on it. I've, I've stayed away from hoods for years. Uh, I really don't like having stuff on my head, but when it gets really cold and windy and rainy, 
I start to think I would like to have some type of hood. Now I will wear a toque. Um, I think some people call them a silly word called beanie. Uh, I don't really use that term, but uh, but you know I, I will wear a toque now and then if it gets really cold. Um, but I find that I can't really wear any kind of hat for more than a few hours before it really starts to bother me. That usually gives me a headache. So I was thinking maybe I should try to find something that has a hood on it, some type of hoodie that I could use um, and maybe use in conjunction with my with my sweaters. Oh, I also have a, a waterproof um, rain jacket. Uh, this I bought at REI. I think I bought it last year when they had one of their little sales and I've been really happy with this one. Uh, I had I had another rain jacket from Patagonia and it was a rain jacket in name but it didn't stop anything uh, at all. But if it was actually raining it would just go right through that rain jacket and uh, I ended up getting rid of that and I bought this REI rain jacket. Of course it was on a really good sale and then I think they had a coupon same as they're doing right now and so it was a really good deal I think it was like 40 bucks for that uh, and that this jacket's actually been fantastic I've used it in heavy rain and I haven't gotten wet now this does have a hood on it um, I don't like the hood and the hood is not insulated so I don't find it helps keep me warm but it has been really useful in the rain um, but since REI is having another one of their sales and they have member coupons, I thought maybe I should just take a look at what they've got. Uh, if they have something that would help keep me warm, especially if I'm not going to be in San Diego weather, I think it might be money well spent. Although I don't really, I really don't think I should be spending any money whatsoever. But when it comes down to being comfortable, I do tend to just spend the money. Well, we have a little bit of a gray day here to start. And I think it's supposed to get a little bit more cloudy as the day rolls on. So we have two REI locations here in the San Diego area. There is one up in North County, San Diego. But I headed to the location on Copley Drive, which is just a few miles from Mission Bay, which is where I was parked last night. Wow, they were busy in there. Uh, I guess it's because of the sale or something. I don't know, but um, it was a madhouse in there. Kind of sensory overload for me. So they were sold out of the color and the size that I wanted. Of course, black. Uh, but they did have some other colors of jackets that I didn't really like the color of. They had kind of a red-orange one and a little too flashy for me, but um, at least I got to try the jacket on and I really like it. I think it would kind of solve all of my cold issues. Uh, it looks like it's really well made and it's 30% off and there's a 20% off coupon for members, so it makes it a really good deal. So. I was talking to one of the REI employees and he encouraged me to call the other REI store and have them hold it for me. So that's what I did and I think I'm just going to drive straight over there now. And I was going to just buy it, but he encouraged me just to ask them to hold it for me, which I didn't realize that was a thing. So uh, yeah, I think that was a nice little tip he gave me there. So um, now I just need to drive the half an hour or so to the other REI location, which is okay. I didn't have my sweater on and it feels cooler than 64 degrees which is what it's supposed to be out 
So I actually had to turn my heat on a little bit because I was a little chilly on the drive over here. Well, I bought it. Uh, one little thing. Oh, and look at how she wrapped it up. It's kind of cute. Um, one little thing is because it was already on sale, they didn't let me use the 20% off coupon, so it was a little more than I had anticipated. But I went ahead and went for it because, again, I don't like being cold. Let me try it on here and show you. I like it. Okay, I've switched back to my old Patagonia sweater because this one is a little bit lighter than the new sweater and the new sweater is down. It's quite a bit more warm than this one, which will come in handy soon, probably like later today. Um, but for the meantime, it's not really warm enough right now to be wearing it. Uh, this, this is perfectly fine. But I don't want to do anything else until I make a little lunch, because I'm hungry now. Well, I'm going to do another lazy meal here of just grilled cheese. You know, I bought, um, I bought some bread here the other day at a bakery called uh, Boudin, I think. Um, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Uh, they are known for making really good sourdough bread. They started, it's a chain that started in San Francisco area and they have restaurants all over the place. I guess you can buy, go in and buy sandwiches and soups in there too, but um, I've only ever bought bread from them. And I bought a couple loaves from them before sourdough. So I went in the other day and bought a loaf and I have to say, this one has not been impressive. I've always really liked their bread before, but there's something about this one that is just not so great. It kind of makes me wish I didn't buy it, but I was craving some sourdough, and so, you know, as we do, we uh, go in and treat ourselves once in a while, but um, I'm eating it. There's nothing really terribly wrong with it, but it's just not like their bread from before. Curious, what has changed? I have no idea. So I'm going to try to toast on some nutritional yeast onto the outside of this bread. See if I can't get it to stick. I've done this with Parmesan cheese on the outside of, uh, of a grilled cheese sandwich, which is really good. Um, but I was just hoping I can do this with nutritional yeast because it's full of B vitamins and that's kind of one of the things that I find I need from time to time. So I'm going to try to see if I can get that to stick as a little crust. It also tastes really good as well. Nutritional yeast is kind of cheesy tasting in itself. I don't think that's sticking. <laughs> This is why I've, I've tried this a couple times before and I just didn't get a very good job uh, of getting it to stick to the bread. I thought maybe if I added some butter that would help a little bit too, but um, it doesn't seem to be. <laughs> well, that didn't work quite as well as I had hoped. Most of the nutritional yeast didn't actually stick to the bread. But a little bit of it stuck. Uh, let's see how it tastes. It was a worthy try. I think I will probably just not do this the next time because it basically just makes a slightly tastier sandwich that is much more messy to eat. Hmm. Now, don't know unless you try, right? Well, I made a tasty sandwich that was, you know, okay, but I know that I can make 
a very good cup of coffee that's going to be phenomenal. So that's what I'm going to do here now. And this coffee, did I mention what I was drinking earlier? Where did I put it? I'm, I'm packed to the gills in here lately, so I, like I've got stuff everywhere, but um, such problems, right? Um, this is a Solar Roast Coffee. I guess that's the name of the company. Yeah, Solar Roast from Colorado. And I bought it a while back and kind of just shoved it up away and started drinking other stuff. And I finally got into this today and I am blown away at how good this is. Of course, it's light roast, which is what I like uh, the best. Here now I'm talking and forgetting what I'm doing. Um, but wow, it is good. I've been wanting to try it for a long time, but I just keep passing it up because it's a little expensive, but I saw it was on sale. So that's why I had grabbed it a while back. Yeah, just excellent coffee. Uh, well, with it being that it's getting dark so early, if I want to see the sunset, I have to kind of think well in advance. So I think because I'm here kind of close to the beach here in Lucadia, I'm just going to drive on down closer and see if I can go park near the beach and maybe get a good view of the sunset tonight. Uh, if there are no clouds, which it looks like, there aren't too many, so it might be a good sunset tonight. Well, Lucadia here has always been one of my favorite little towns in Southern California. And what's cool about this spot is they let us park right off of Route 1 here. And as you can tell, it's a little noisy. You've got lots and lots of traffic because it's a popular little town. And Route 1 is a popular place to drive, not only because there's people that live here, but people like to drive up and down. It's a really pretty little stretch of road to uh, travel up and down. So not the greatest place to sit and spend the day if you're just gonna sit in your van. Uh, also, another reason is there are train tracks that run right here as well and so you have a lot of train noise all day and late into the day too so not the greatest place to sit in your van but a cool place if you just want a free place to park for the day and it's a very short walk down to the beach and this again is one of the really nicer beaches uh, here in Southern California so nice spot and free parking in a nice town it's really kind of hard to beat that well, as the sun is going down, it's starting to get cooler, so I think before I walk over to the beach, I'm going to swap out my sweater for my new, nor for my new uh, more warm sweater. I'm tongue-tied and twisted today. I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, because as soon as that sun goes down, I'm going to be chilly, so this will be a good test. I think I'm just going to take it um, by itself. And you know, obviously this is a down sweater and so I need to be mindful of not being out in the rain. And luckily, you know, we don't have a whole lot of rain here in San Diego. We get some, more than you probably realize if you're not from this area. But, you know, it, it is something to keep in mind. Uh, I do have my um, rain jacket. So if I know it's going to rain, I can just throw the rain jacket over this. But I'm sure that a lot of people stay away from down stuff just because of that fact that you can't get it wet. But that's not really something that I'm worried about, especially because I've really tested my rain jacket out and I know that it works really well. Now my old rain jacket, that would have been a problem. It would have soaked right through and I would have not had any insulation whatsoever. Let's go walk down to the beach.
I'm not really hungry yet, but I figure I better get dinner on now because I'm going to cook some lentil soup and that'll take a few minutes and then two, it'll give me some time to let it cool down before I put it away. So um, I'm just going to get this going now and it almost seems like the traffic and noise is getting worse here, uh, but it's a fine place to sit for a little bit and get dinner going. I just gave these lentils a quick little rinse and then I also look to see if I can see any stones or any loose little bits in them. Every once in a while you'll get a little tiny rock or stone or a little bit of something in them. Always good to just take a minute and look. Make sure there's nothing you're going to break your tooth on. Alright, and just to help out the flavor a little bit, I sometimes I buy some broth, but I found this little bag of powdered vegetable broth, and I've been trying it out. I've used it a couple of times now, and um, if I can get it open, there we go. Uh, it seems pretty good. Uh, I don't usually use as much as they recommend on the on the package here. I just use it as kind of a little extra flavor boost. And I'd never heard of it before. I was just walking through a farmer's market and saw it and gave it a try. Um, so I don't know really where to get it other than farmer's markets, but um, good stuff. I, uh, I like it. All right, and then I'm just gonna, I think that's just about right water-wise. I'll just let that come to a boil and then simmer it a few minutes and these little lentils cook really fast because they're tiny little lentils. So dinner will be ready soon. Hopefully I'll be hungry by then. All right these are done and I had to add just a little bit more water and a little bit more uh, salt to them while they were cooking and then I've got some pork carnitas here. I just needed a little extra calories, so that's what I'm adding here. I should do this this way, right, so I, you can see what I'm doing. Um, all right, and I was trying to make it not too soupy. Just trying to make it a little more, less, less broth. Again, I kind of need the calories at the moment, so. Um, I'm just going to let that sit for a moment to kind of heat through those pork carnitas and then I will have some dinner. Okay, see how I did. Hmm. It's really good but I have one problem. This is not the utensil I need to be using. There we go, my spork. My spork is one of my best friends. Okay, let's try this again with the proper utensil this time. Mmm. Much better. The spork really makes, makes a difference. Well, I think I'm going to call it a night. I need to find a place to park. I have heard that you can park here overnight. It's probably not the quietest place to park, being that there's the train track that is right just a few feet away. Uh, but I have seen people park here. I just have never tried it myself. So I think I can find a better spot. Uh, and I had some kind of plans tomorrow. So I think I need to be down south of, this, of the city. 
uh, would be better for my plans tomorrow. So I'm going to hit the roads here. And before I go, I would just like to say a special thank you to all of the YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Uh, you really make this worthwhile, and I really appreciate all of you. So just a little special thank you to all of you who help support me in that way. And, of course, to everybody, I'd just like to say thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.